Hello and welcome back to Stuart Thomas Media and another episode of Steve's Reviews. So today, we're going to take a look at this, the Hover Passport Drone. This Wi-Fi controlled drone has a range of around 20 meters. It can shoot up to 4K resolution and is capable of taking 13 megapixel photos. Its carbon fiber enclosure allows for safe use in a family environment. Now the style is one of the coolest things about this drone and it's almost magical in a way. Now essentially the drone is that. It hovers and takes photos with the camera on the front. Well, it folds in half into a little book size or passport size uh, drone bag case holder thing. Mm. But it folds down and it means it can fit inside pockets or bags and it is really, really small. It's got a full cage around the propellers as well so you can grab it with your hand and you're not in any danger of chopping your fingers off unlike other options. So the style is awesome. Um, the battery is pretty cool as well so if I shut this, even the battery is well designed. It's like this little backpack that sits on top and pops it in there and there's only one button on the very top. So the style is a really interesting looking piece of kit. Now the real question is, does this function? Now you just saw me use it a few minutes ago. Now the way this works is you hold this in at the top and the light starts going. And it takes a little while for it to start up. And it's got a Wi-Fi network, which you can join in on the phone. So I'm going to do that now. Two seconds. Oh, that means it's on. And bear with me. That's okay, cool. So you can probably see on there, behind the scenes on the phone. Now that... I can view everything on my phone and pilot it from there. Now it's all on and ready to go. All I need to do is hold it up in the air, press like this, and then let go. And it should be hovering there quite steady. And I can move this around. I'm gonna restart recording now on the drone, so you can see me in the drone. Now I can move it back and forward. Ooh. So it's quite nice to pilot and quite easy to pilot as well. Now if I bring it back towards me, oh god, oh god, oh god, that's underneath the desk. And like I said, you can just grab it from the air and go ahead and fold it up and put it in your bag. So that functions really well. Now, there isn't just the normal functionality flying around. It's got a bunch of other features available to it. So what I did was I took it up into the mountains and I used a few of those features, which I'll show you now. So the first thing you'll see is that it automatically finds the person who is using the app. So in this case, it's tracking my face automatically as soon as you let it hover. So this allows me to walk around the device and it tracked me following my movement. Now it also has gesture based controls. If I put my hand in the air in the peace sign, it will take a photo. So you can see the photo quality is quite good. That 13 megapixel camera really does a good job. Now this is body tracking. So instead of just tracking face, it can track your body for filming while you're running or skateboarding. 
you'll notice the footage is a bit wobbly as it's trying to keep up and balance with the wind and the speed that I'm going at. Now, when I start to sprint, this is where the Passport drone starts to um, struggle to keep up with me. And the longer I sprint for, the further away I get from the camera without it being able to keep up. Now this mode is called Orbit, and you can see it struggled here with the white balance slightly. But essentially you can turn this on and it will spin around you. This is sped up by about twice. Now I'm flying in free mode, just to see how high it can go, and I realize that I have a bald patch on the top of my head. Overall, you can get some good height from it, and it's relatively stable as well. But let's just hold that there for just a second. Now you may have noticed the Hover Passport logo in the bottom right hand corner. Well, I couldn't find a way to export the videos in high resolution without this stamp being there, which is highly frustrating. Of course that could be just me being stupid and not being able to find the setting. However, I did look extensively and I couldn't find a way to get the high resolution videos off without that stamp. I found ways of exporting low resolution samples, but not the full version. Hmm. So this drone is quite expensive and I'll talk more about that in the conclusion, but it comes to around 500 pounds. Now guys, if you are looking for any discounts on anything you've seen me review, and you want to support me, head on over to the Stu's Review Club over on Patreon. And over there, if you subscribe for $1, which is about 80p or 65 Indian rupees, you can support me and get access to loads of different discounts uh, on loads of different products. So you can check out an up-to-date list over there. I think it's a fantastic piece of kit. It's one of those pieces of technology that comes around every once in a while that makes your jaw drop. I love how I can just let go and it starts hovering in the air and it's great to take selfies. I love the new gesture control, but and this is a big but, it is 500 pounds. Do you get 500 pounds worth of drone out of it? I don't think so. If you compare it to something like the Phantom 3 standard, which you could get for around 450 to 500 pounds, similar sort of price, You've got a drone there that can go sort of one, two miles distance. You've got a drone that you can fly um, using an RC controller. You get a lot of benefits through that. Okay, fine, the Phantom 3 might not be as portable, which this certainly is, but it's certainly more versatile in the sense of it can do a lot more and it can go a lot further. But that said, this is an incredible piece of kit. It is the first version they've done. So where they go next, I'm really looking forward to seeing where this company takes it, what the next version is going to be. But for now, this sort of thing is ideal for the people who want to take selfies, a couple of quick videos on the beach with their dogs, um, and overall family use. And I guess, guys, that concludes my review. So if you like the video, don't forget to head down to that like button, then pop over to the subscribe button, and then share if you're feeling nice. And I'll see you back on Stuart Thomas Media for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon.